plants, even though they can't really move and think like we do, as far as we know, can still be quite the powerful force to be reckoned with. Some are mesmerizingly beautiful, others can kill you with a single touch. Whatever you do, don't underestimate them. There are so many species of plants that we're probably about halfway to discovering all of them. From an innocent looking fruit that can kill you in agony to an extremely bizarre plant that literally goes hunting, here are the 20 strangest plants on Earth. Number 20. Nepenthes this plant looks strange, doesn't it? From the Greek nepenthes, which means that dissipates pain, nepenthes is a genus of carnivorous plant popularly known as pitcher plants or monkey cups. They are native plants of the tropical regions of the Old World. They are distributed in southern China, Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines, western Madagascar, Seychelles, south to Australia and New Caledonia, having as northern limit India and Sri Lanka. The greatest diversity is found in Borneo and Sumatra, with a large number of endemic species. The name monkey cup refers to the fact that monkeys have been observed drinking rainwater from them. The funny-looking jar trap, which initially emerges as a cocoon to progressively expand to form a balloon or tube crowned by a lid, contains an aqueous fluid or kind of syrup produced by the plant itself, where the insects, attracted by the smell produced by the nectar glands in the mouth and lid of the skin, fall and are digested so that the plant can assimilate their nutrients and protein. This plant has become quite popular among plant keepers that have a slight bee or fly issue, as the plant will inevitably inevitably attract the critters and eat them. All you gotta do is purchase one of these awesome plants and let it do its thing. Great, huh? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Japanese Umbrella Pine the Shadopitis versatilata is a relic species of conifer. This plant is difficult to place in a classification. The morphological peculiarities of this species testify to a very particular and enigmatic evolution. The Shadopitiaceae were considered a genus within the Cupraceae until genetic studies proved that it was not related to this group. It has evergreen foliage and reaches 20 meters high on average. The twigs and the insertion of the leaves are very particular. The large green leaves are rolled up and inserted in pairs around the whorl, closely above Above the small brown tortoise shell leaves that also form a whorl. The green leaves may be a tiny twig reduced to two leaves or a Y-shaped cladode. The tree is conical in shape and dense, with a cardboard bark that resembles redwood bark, dark reddish brown in color, which crumbles into pieces. Its growth is quite slow, 5 to 8 meters in 20 years. Currently, it grows in moist forests in Japan, but fossil forms of Shadopides have been found from the late Jurassic. This genus appears to have a European origin. In the Cretaceous, it lived in many regions of the temperate northern hemisphere. Shadopides cretacea, for example, is an extinct European species close to the present one. Number 18. Dancing Plant much has been said on the internet about this curious little plant, whose scientific name is Desmodium gyrans, but it is better known by its other names, telegraph plant or semaphore plant. But how true is it that it can dance? Well, the truth is, unfortunately, it doesn't dance. There are some plants capable of making quick movements. Our protagonist here moves its leaves every three to four minutes. In fact, in the description of some videos uploaded to YouTube, it is specified that the recording speed of the video is increased. Plants live on a different time scale. It's something logical and normal that when we see a plant capable of making rapid movements, our brains interpret it as uh, the plant can dance. But if you have a chance, try it. Watch Desmodium gyrans with music, then without music. You'll see that it does the same movement. Movements. This is probably a strategy to maximize light by tracking the sun. The dancing plant is a shrub of the Fabaceae family native to tropical Asia. Its presence is abundant in countries such as Taiwan, Vietnam, Pakistan, Indonesia, Cambodia, Laos, and Malaysia. This plant has been known for centuries and was, in fact, described in detail by Darwin in his work The Energy of Motion in Plants in 1880. Number 17. Naked Man Orchid 
Have you ever wondered what a plant would look like if it resembled a naked man? Well, here you go. I present to you the Naked Man Orchid. They even wear cute little flower hats. Orchids get their name from the Greek orchis, meaning testicle, from the appearance of the underground tubers. The Naked Man Orchid is an herbaceous plant with two ovoid tubercles. Its stem is erect, robust, often column-shaped, and reaches up to 55 centimeters in height. The flowers are gathered in a spike-like inflorescence, dense and conical, with 15 to 50 flowers. These are small without peduncle and variable in color from whitish to different shades of pink and purple. The labellum, which is a modified petal of the orchid flower that's clearly distinguished from other petals and sepals due to its large size and irregular shape, is whitish or pinkish, sometimes mottled with purple. It is highly lobed. The lateral lobes are acute, and the central one is deeply triangular, divided into two secondary lobes separated by a tooth. It blooms in spring. The erect fruit is a capsule with six ribs. They're found in the Mediterranean the Middle East, and North Africa. It lives in meadows and clearings of thickets and forests, both in limestone and silicious soils from 300 to 1,000 meters in altitude. Number 16. Black Bat Flower or Devil Flower Devil flower is a unique and solitary tropical plant and the world's creepiest flowers. It's purplish-brown in color and very strange in appearance, resembling a bat or a cat's whiskers. It belongs to the Dioscoraceae family and comes from the tropical areas of Southeast Asia. It is native to Bangladesh, India, Burma, Southern China, and Southeast Asia. It's a very unusual tropical herb that belongs to the yam family. There are about 15 species of this plant. They do look quite similar to the yams with which they are often confused. They are perennials with tuberous roots. Devil flowers have large, elongated, simple leaves, sometimes lobed, growing directly from the tuber. The flowers are grouped in umbels at the end of long stalks, also attached directly to the tuber. The most spectacular part of the plant, of course, is the large bracts extending like wings around the flowers. Next to these are long filaments, also called bracteoles, which give the inflorescence and the appearance of feline whiskers. The actual flowers are clustered in the middle of all this and are the most unassuming part of the whole thing, ironically. In various countries, the various medicinal properties of its rhizomes are known. Number 15. Golf Ball it is a species belonging to the Cactaceae family. It is an almost spherical cactus with whitish fruits reaching a diameter of 2 to 3.5 centimeters, and it looks just like a golf ball. It is endemic to Querétaro, Mexico. Its natural habitat is deserts. Sadly, it is considered a critically endangered species subject to special protection by Samarnat, which is Mexico's environment ministry, since there's a loss of its habitat. The golf ball plant is a fleshy and globose perennial plant that grows singly or with shoots at the base. The spherical stems reach a diameter of 2 to 3.5 centimeters. The areolas are cylindrical, truncated at the end, and close together. They do not contain latex. Central spines are not present. The 100 or more radial spines are like bristles, white or gray in color, and not all the same. They radiate horizontally and intertwine, reaching a size of 1 to 5 millimeters in length. The pink flowers reach a length of 2 to 2.5 centimeters. The small, almost spherical fruits are whitish with blackish-brown seeds. The estimated population is less than 50 individuals that grow in one kilometer squared west of the Zimapan Dam in Querétaro in Mexico. It is currently considered a critically endangered species subject to special protection by Samarnat. It is also protected from international trade in the CITES Convention and as a vulnerable species by the IUCN. Number 14. The Cobra Lily also called Darlingtonia californica, this specimen is a genus of carnivorous plant belonging to the Saraciniaceae family that includes four species, typical red purpurea, red, and othello. Native to northern California and Oregon, it grows in swamps and running water. It's an uncommon plant due to its rarity in the field. The cobra lily is unique in that it doesn't trap rainwater in its jug, but it rather regulates it inside by pumping it out from its roots or expelling it as needed. Its leaves do not produce digestive enzymes since the cells that absorb the insects and the occasional invertebrate are identical to the roots of the soil, relying on symbiotic bacteria. The flower is purple-yellow and grows about the same length as the stem, with five green sepals that are longer than the red-veined petals. It is used in Californian flower therapy to help people who feel despondency with disassociation from the instinctive aspects of the self or who are even afraid of them strengthening physical vitality. The cobra lily has an otherworldly quality to it and it almost defies description. The leaves resemble 
resemble the head of a cobra, hence their name, and they serve a specialized function. They are able to survive in areas that are poor in nutrients. Number 13. Strychnos Electri this plant is beautiful yet extremely deadly. Scientists announced the discovery of a possibly toxic flower that lived between 20 and 30 million years ago called Strychnus electri inside amber unearthed on a mountainside in the Dominican Republic. The flower belongs to the group that is currently the basis for Strychnine and Curare. According to the researchers, it would have also possibly have contained toxic components. The scientists found two specimens of the flower just 10 millimeters in diameter and tubular in shape in a dark amber and were surprised by the excellent state of preservation, one of the best of any fossilized flower. These pieces of amber are like time capsules, a frozen moment of life that we can now study. The flower is incredibly well preserved. It's undistorted, it's not compressed, it's not broken into pieces, it looks like it just fell off a branch, only it happened millions of years ago. The flowers lived in a humid tropical forest along with a variety of trees, shrubs, grass, and vines, said entomologist and amber expert George Poinar of Oregon State University. Strychnos electri is part of one of the three largest lineages of plants, known as asterids, which also includes the sunflower, potato, coffee, tomato, and mint families. Basically, all the plants that today give us all those treats that we love used to be extremely poisonous. Cool, huh? Number 12. Dead Horse Arum Helicodiceros is a monotypic genus of flowering plants in the family Araceae. Its only species, Helicodiceros muscivorus, is native to the Balearic Islands, Corsica, and Sardinia. The main particularity of this plant is that it reproduces the stench of rotting meat, hence its name, which attracts blowflies that will act as pollinators. It is a representative of a rare group of thermogenic plants. That is, they can raise their temperature in thermogenesis. This helps attract flies to the plant so they can come into contact with the pollen. Helicodiceros Set, you know, I'm just gonna go with dead horse arum, produces a protogenous inflorescence that resembles the anal area of a dead mammal and produces a foul odor for a few hours after sunrise. The flies enter the flower department, pollinate the female florets, and trap themselves until the next morning, when the pollen on the male florets matures. The exposed appendage exhibits a strong unimodal episode of thermogenesis associated with odor production, reaching a maximum of 30 degrees Celsius in the 15 degrees Celsius ambient temperature. This is one of the the most spectacular plant species of our flora due to the shape of its inflorescence. The flowers are authentic traps to catch but not kill flies because they serve as pollinators. For the same reason, its smell is foul-smelling, reminiscent of decomposing meat. Number 11. Giant Water Lily also known as Victoria Amazonica, it is the largest of all water lilies, native to the shallow waters of the Amazon River of Peru, Brazil, and Colombia, and is also found in Bolivia, Guyana, Paraguay, and Venezuela. It is characterized by having large circular leaves up to a meter in diameter that float on the surface of the water on submerged stems that reach 7 to 8 meters in length. They can support up to 40 kilograms if the weight is well distributed on its surface. The flower, which measures up to 40 centimeters in diameter, opens at dusk from 6 p.m. and exhales an apricot-like fragrance, called by Europeans lacustrine rose, and remains open until about 9 a.m. the morning the following day to reopen the following night. The first night, the flower is white and female, only the stigma is mature and can receive pollen. The second night, the flower is pink and male. The anthers have matured and produce pollen that is used to fertilize other flowers. The pollinators are beetles of the Cyclocephala castanea species that remain imprisoned for the day after the first night and upon a escaping the next morning, load themselves with pollen. This massive and magnificent plant flowers from early March to July. Currently, there are numerous varieties thanks to new biotechnologies with which it's possible to control the size of the leaves. For this reason, they are widely used in urban landscaping, both in large lakes and in small water bodies. Number 10. Living Stones Lithops is a genus of succulent plants with 38 species belonging to the Isoaceae family native to southern Africa. They are commonly called living stones or stone plants because they have an appearance that makes them practically indistinguishable from the stones in their surroundings. This is due to an evolutionary adaptation called crypsis, which allows them to camouflage themselves against possible predators. 
They are characterized by having two coupled leaves divided by a fissure through which the flowers appear. Each pair of leaves forms the body of the plant, which is cylindrical or conical in shape with a flat surface. A new pair of leaves sprout annually from the fissure between the leaves, and as soon as they develop, the old ones dry up. Species vary in coloration, being green, purplish, or pink, and may be spotted, striated, or dotted. They often have windows that correspond to small, transparent, or translucent areas without chlorophyll, through which light reaches the part of the plant that remains buried. Flowering occurs in autumn. The nocturnal flowers are daisy-shaped. These plants grow extremely slowly, and they never really get more than an inch above the soil. Older living stones form clumps of colorful pebbles in their pot, kind of like a natural sculpture for your garden. Number 9. Dragon's Blood Tree Dracaena cinnabari is a tree with a thick trunk reaching a height of up to 10 meters. The branches branch out and their cups form a distinctive hemisphere. The leaves are vertical, rigid, seated, and with an enlarged base. They reach 30 to 60 centimeters in length and 2 to 3 centimeters in width. It is an arborescent plant endemic to the island of Socotra. It flowers in a strongly branched out panicle. The flower pedicel is 5 millimeters long. The flowering covers up to 5 millimeters in length. This is one of the species of dragon trees that produces the resin called dragon blood, which is used in some traditional medicines or as a dye. This resin was already traded in the ancient world, and it's only collected once a year, hence its great value in the market. It transforms in C2 into a red-looking syrup, which is then heated to form a black paste. The natural populations of Socotra dragon trees currently suffer from a lack of renewal that's due not to the resin harvests to which they're subjected, nor to grazing, but to a general increase in the dryness of the island's climate. Number 8. Baseball Plant Euphorbia obesa looks like a perfect baseball, which makes it quite decorative. Its diameter is 6 centimeters for the young, but can reach 15 centimeters for the older ones. Its shape is spherical for the young and cylindrical for the old. It contains a water tank for periods of drought. It almost always shows eight ribs adorned with small and deep humps regularly planted on the edges. It is horizontal green with lighter or darker stripes. In nature and with exposure to direct sunlight, it shows areas of red and purple. The small flowers are insignificant at the apex. In fact, like all euphorbias, the flowers are called cyathios. As in many euphorbias, the latex sap is quite toxic, so try and stay away from it. They live in similar conditions on two different continents, South Africa and South America. Euphorbia obesa presents a form of convergence with Astrophytum asterius, which is a cactus from Mexico. The plant is dioecious, meaning it bears only male or female flowers on each stem. The wild variety is in danger of extinction due to overcollection and poaching due to its slow growth and the fact that the pod contains only two to three seeds. However, it is widely cultivated in botanical gardens. Number 7. Swaddled Baby's Orchid Anguloa uniflora is a species of orchid with a terrestrial habitat. There are 10 species of Anguloa, all of which are native to South America. Swaddled Baby's Orchid is a robust, herbaceous plant that prefers cold to hot climates. Standing at 61 centimeters, it is one of the largest terrestrial plant species in the world. It flowers after the fall of the deciduous leaves from summer to early autumn in an erect inflorescence 15 to 25 centimeters long. It has a solitary flower of 10 centimeters long. The overlapping petals resemble a tulip. It is fleshy, cinnamon-scented, and long-lasting. It is distributed between Colombia to Peru and is found at elevations of 1,400 to 2,500 meters in Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru in moist montane forests in deep shade. Most growers of this plant find that a greenhouse and high humidity are the keys to care for it the best, mainly because it mimics its natural habitat. Number 6. Cape Sundew the great Charles Darwin studied it thoroughly and went so far as to say that he cared more about the biology of this carnivorous plant than any other species in the world. And that's because the soft but lethal movements of the sundew are fascinating. It is known as sundew because its leaves have hairs with small secretions, as if they were the drops that appear in the morning which attracts insects. They are also a diabolical death trap for the unfortunate winged creatures. These endings, rich in sugars, are very sticky and the animal is trapped between them. These glands are extremely sensitive. When the plant senses that an insect has landed, it begins to trap it with more and more dewdrops until the animal, exhausted and finally suffocated, dies. 
According to Darwin's studies, the touch of a mosquito's leg is enough to activate the sundew's mechanisms. The ability to react is different among the 194 species of this plant spread throughout the world. The Drosera burmani and the Cecilifolia react in seconds, and even the Drosera glandulagera doesn't take more than a few tenths. Others, such as the Drosera capensis, in addition to its endings, also wrap its victims in the leaf, subjecting the insect to an agony of up to 30 minutes. Its hunting method is the result of an evolution to supply the lack of nutrients, especially nitrogen, that its roots should provide. When this carnivorous plant catches an insect, it absorbs its liquids and obtains the desired element. Number 5. Elephant Foot Yam Known mainly for its flowers, Amorphophallus pioneofolius is an herbaceous species with petioles rising from the ground 2 meters long and 15 to 20 centimeters wide. It has huge tubers and leaves reminiscent of those of the peony with medicinal properties. Elephant foot yam is a perennial herbaceous species with globular tubers depressed in the center 25 to 30 centimeters in diameter and about 20 centimeters in height of dark brown color. At the vegetative restart before the leaves, the tubers produce an inflorescence on a short peduncle consisting of a sessile spadix 10 to 70 centimeters long with female flowers arranged in the lower part cylindrical 3 to 25 centimeters long followed by the male part cylindrical to obconical in shape 3 to 15 centimeters long and up to 10 centimeters in diameter, surmounted by a sterile appendage of very variable shape, ovoid, globose, globose depressed, or almost conical, 5 to 30 centimeters in length and diameter, usually of a shiny dark brown color. What a sentence. The inflorescence emits a penetrating smell of rotten meat which serves to attract pollinating insects. After pollination, the spadix elongates up to 1 meter and more, with the cylindrical fruit zone measuring up to 50 centimeters in length and 8 centimeters in diameter. The tubers are ready for harvesting or for eventual transplanting after leaf fall. The tubers and leaves are used in traditional medicine, especially Indian, for different pathologies. Number 4. Jellyfish Tree it is a rare and unusual species found only on the island of Mahé in the Seychelles. The plant was thought to be extinct until it was rediscovered in 1970. The flower stigmas resemble the tentacles of a jellyfish, hence its common name. This unusual plant usually forms a shrub or a small tree that can grow up to 10 meters in height. Its bark is dark in color, almost gray in fact, and it's quite rough on the surface with ridges. The leaves of the jellyfish tree are usually long with a shiny, slippery, leathery surface. A curious fact about this plant is that the leaves turn into a reddish color as the tree gets old or right before the leaves drop. Sadly, today it's estimated that there are fewer than 100 mature jellyfish trees in nature. This plant lives in such a dynamic and complex natural habitat that each population has a unique genetic information that it doesn't share with any other populations of the same species. Seeing as they only exist on one island, that's quite impressive. This fact also highlights the need for specialized protection of even smaller populations, which can consist in only a few trees. Number 3. Hammer Orchid These little quirky members of the Australian flora have charmed their way into many orchid enthusiasts' hearts. However, what's made hammer orchids famous worldwide isn't their appearance, but their flair for using some of the most unusual and bizarre reproductive strategies on Earth. Let me explain. These cheeky flowers have a single heart-shaped leaf that sits flush with the soil surface, and it grows in areas of dry and inhospitable sand, which is a very unusual choice for the delicate orchids. If you look closely and use your imagination, you'll notice that the flower kind of looks like an insect. Well, there's a very good reason for that. This is a sexually deceptive orchid like many others, but this one stands out from the crowd. They're pollinated by the thinine wasps, a unique species in which the male picks up the flightless female and they mate in the air. So when a confused male approaches the hammer orchid, he picks up the petal and attempts to fly off with it thinking it's a female wasp. As a result of the combination of the male wasp's momentum and the hinge mechanism, he ends up swinging upside down onto the flower's reproductive organ. And that's it. The male wasp is now carrying the pollen he will propagate in his search for an actual female wasp. Number 2. Hydnora africana 
The African hydnora, native to the arid deserts of South Africa, is a chlorophyll-free parasitic plant that grows underground and emerges with its red flower to grab its prey. This is a surprising species that reveals an appealing fleshy flower that emerges from the ground and exhales a putrid odor to attract its natural pollinators. Its unusual appearance is remarkably similar to fungi and is only distinguished from them when the flower opens. The flower begins to develop underground and appears through the ground after heavy rains, although this happens rarely since it can go several years without appearing. Under favorable conditions, it takes at least a year to go from bud to mature flower. With a color that varies between brown and gray when young and dark gray, almost black, when it ages, this plant has neither leaves nor chlorophyll and can reach a height between 100 and 150 millimeters. The flower acts as a trap and captures insects that are fully attached to the plant and pollinate it. Once pollination's over, the flower opens again so they can escape. This plant also has subterranean fruits that are sought out by some animals for food. Its slightly sweet flavor attracts many different creatures. By not digesting the seeds, they allow the plant to germinate, ensuring its survival. Number 1. Death Apple Tree also known as Hippomane monchinella, this is a species of the genus Hippomane. It is a tree of the Euphorbiaceae family, native to Mesoamerica and the islands of the Caribbean Sea. Like many other Euphorbiaceae, it is powerfully toxic and its apple-like, pleasantly scented fruit can be deadly to humans. The death apple tree, despite its ominous name, is a good-looking tree. It can reach 20 meters in height if its stems grow straight, but due to its coastal distribution, it's not uncommon for it to collapse during its growth, since the sandy and wet soil cannot retain its weight, and then it adopts an almost creeping shape that is extremely tortuous. The trunk and numerous branches are covered with a thick, cracked, gray bark. The cup is wide and round. While there are no reported instances of anyone dying from eating its innocent-looking fruit, if you were to bite into it, the sweet and pleasant taste of it would quickly turn into painful agony. The Manchinella fruit causes intense burning and severe swelling of the throat. The area around your mouth would get quite inflamed and blistered, and potential severe digestive problems can ensue. So, you know, stay away from this apple. I don't know about you, but I had no idea that such fascinating plants even existed. What about you? Which one of these amazing plants would you like to own? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!